Hello, in this tutorial I will tell you about strings in Python. Generally in computer programming a string is a sequence of characters and its purpose is for example to read from files or to write output files to read user input and write output to the user. Let's start IPython for Python 3 and have a look what you can do. We can define strings in three different ways. We can start them with a single quote, hello world, or we can do the same with a double quote. And uh, the, the purpose of having each possibility is if you need to have a single double quote in the string, you can simply type it. So here I can type hello double quote world, for example. And it works because the string is delimited by the single quote here and here. So I can use the double quote here as a regular character, no problem. And the other way around as well. So here I have double quotes as delimiter and a single quote here in the middle. This still works. But what if I need to have single quotes and double quotes? Then I have two options. One of them would be, here this doesn't work, uh, one of the options would be to escape the double quote. That would mean having a backslash in front of the letter I want to escape. So it's not taken as as a quote to end the string, but as a sign inside the string. So this here would work, for example. Or I could delimit the string with three consecutive quotes. So I can say, hello, and then I can do whatever I want in single and double quotes inside, and it will still work. I can even do new lines inside of the string here. Let's say, hello world, this is great. OK, and Python stores the string having the new line character, which is an escaped n. Now we can store this string in a variable. Let's say s for string is hello world. Now what can we do with these strings? We can add strings together. For example, I can say s plus and then add a new string to it. Let's say an uh, explanation mark and this is great. This adds the two strings together, which is also called concatenation. This is the first string and this is the second string. We can also multiply strings, s times 3, which simply concatenates the string s to itself three times. So we've got hello world, hello world, and again hello world. If you want to access a part of the string, we could <coughs> type s square bracket and then the letter we want to access. For example, 2. Now which letter will we get? We'll get the L. But why is that? Why don't we get E? Because indexing starts at zero. This has a, a history in computer programming. Initially, uh, a string was essentially a list of characters and the string variable was a pointer to the beginning of the string. And so S0 would be the first character, which is the beginning of the string and s2 would be the beginning of the string plus 2, so the beginning of the string plus 1 and 2, so we would get the l at s2. And uh, we can also, of course, access s1 and everything else, but we can also access the back of the string, say s minus 3, which is the third from the back, that would be the r character and s minus 2 as well as s minus 1 which is d here. Uh, if you would do s minus 0 minus 0 would evaluate immediately to 0 so we would get the h again and there it is. Now we can also do slicing. Slicing is giving you a part of the string but it's actually a copy of that part say we can do s1 colon 3 which gives us the character 
after the first character and until before the third. So if I print string before, it's we get it from here, from before one to before three. And uh, you can also say s colon three, which means from the start of the string to before the third. Or the other way around, s three colon from before the third to the end of the string. Finally, we can of course do the same with negative indices. That means I can do s colon minus three, which means from the start of the string to three before the end. I do s again, so you see the less three are missing. And then we can also get uh, parts of the string. Let's say we want uh, from the first character, not the first in the string, but uh, the one with the index one, until three before the end, but not every one, but every second character. So we get the E, the L, the space, and the O. That's slicing. And if we take such a slice, I call it slice equals this slice here, slice. This is a, a copy of that part. Now that's something that's very important. Strings are generally immutable. So we cannot change an existing string. I cannot say s3 equals another character, let's say t. Python will, uh, will uh, end this with an error. And there it is, it's a type error. String object does not support item assignment because it's not mutable. And that also means that this slice here, I cannot change the slice. So by having a slice, I cannot change the string either. So I cannot do slice three trying to change the string or th slice three is t trying to change the string because I cannot even change the slice. Um, and uh, we can also look at how long a string is. Let's print out L again. The length of the string is denoted by len of it. And length of the string is 11. So that means we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if position zero to ten, which is eleven characters, we never, we can never access the length of the string. So we can never access the eleventh because we start at zero. We have to end at one minus the length. So the last character would be len of s minus one, but that's a bit complicated to type because we can simply say s minus one to be sure. Now there are a few functions, things you can do with strings. You don't have to memorize these. IPython helps you. So I can just say s dot and use the tab key in IPython and IPython will tell me which functions are available for strings. For strings. There are plenty different ones. Let's have a look what's common, for example, upper. Would uh, create a new string which is uppercase. It does not change the existing string. So I do s dot upper colon colon and I get a new string which is all uppercase and the original string is still the way it was. It's still lowercase. Now if we don't know how to use such a function and I'm not going to demonstrate all of them because there are plenty we can uh, we can use the help which comes in IPython so I can say s.find and a question mark at the end and IPython will show me return the lowest index in s where substring sub is found. So let's say s.find and enter a substring, let's say world, and it will tell me where in the string s the string world occurs. It starts in position 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. World exists and starts at position 0. Where does the character h occur first? It's in position zero. And where is the string boom? It's not in there, so s.find returns minus one. You can also split uh, 
a string into a list. For example, if you're reading an input file and we get uh, a list of of names, let's say hmm, John Doe and Jane Q Citizen and uh, Joe Soap, for example. And we want to, to split this into three separate strings, each containing one name. We can say s.split. And if we don't know the exact syntax, we can again use the help with the question mark and says the separator primarily is none. So it would, it would uh, separate the string on white space. We can try that out, s.split. And we get a list of plenty of strings, not just the names, but first names, and then we have the commas inside. This is definitely not what we want. What we want is to split the string at a comma followed by a space. Right. S.split. Now we have John Doe and Chain Q Citizen and Choso in a list. Then there's an idiom which does essentially the inverse. So if we have a list L is this list of strings. If we have a list and we want to write this to a file and we want to concatenate this so we have a, a single long string, we can just say take a string and join this list together. And this is the character that's used to combine these strings here together. At the moment it's an empty string so they these three strings will be combined as they are. So I get John Doe with nothing in between to chain Q citizen and nothing in between to show soap. If I want to have some delimiter, I can, for example, use a comma. Then I have John Doe, chain citizen, and show soap, or anything else, which is fairly common. That's already the end of this tutorial. I hope you you can benefit of it and have fun programming Python.